There's 7 billion people on the planet and the bulk of those people use plastic and increasingly it's disposable plastic. It's plastic that's designed to be thrown away. You use it for a matter of minutes and then it becomes waste because maybe the bin is overflowing, people will litter and then so the next storm comes and it's just going to blow this stuff down our stormwater drains, into our creeks and our rivers, into our bays and the next stop is the ocean. Oh, hi, my name's Neil Blake. Uh, I'm just ringing about a bunch of pre-production pallets that have turned up. Yeah, they're raw materials for most things that are made of plastic that are uh, moulded into various items. There's uh, literally thousands of them that have been washed in on the tide. It seems to me to be a serious concern that there are so many of the waterways. We have literally hundreds of drains there's 3,000 kilometres of creeks and streams running into the western port in Port Phillip Bay and all of them carry plastic pollution because it floats. A lot of the trash that gets washed out through the Yarra outflows follows the northeastern coast of the bay and comes around onto shorelines like this. A piece of plastic container here, it's photodegrading and becoming more brittle as it ages. You can see that it quite easily fractures. The lifespan of plastic in the marine environment is essentially forever. It never disappears, it only simply breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. Smaller pieces means more species can potentially ingest it. It can float around in the ocean for many, many decades and it takes all of the contaminants out in the marine environment in very minute, diluted quantities, absorbs it onto the surface of those plastic items like a little toxic bullet. We're eating those marine predators that are also kind of at the top of their own food chain. And what happens is, is biomagnification and also bioaccumulation. If ingested by a marine creature, all of the contaminants in and on the surface are then transferred into that animal's bodily tissue. We inherit those contaminants into our own tissues. Because you're finding them in all sorts of spots, aren't you, around the bay? Found them from as far as Altona down right, to so. Sorrento. Mm. Okay, right. We'd like to take the message to the schools in the Yarra catchment. What ends up on the ground in your schoolyard eventually goes through the river and ends up in the bay. And it doesn't stop unless something, you know, something really big happens in the community. There's so much worth protecting here. We represent a group called Beach Patrol. So we start off at Port Melbourne and we do 3206, which is Middle Park, and all the, all the postcodes down. So, so we meet once a month picking up trash that's lying on the beaches. You've got to think about it in the longer term. You know, if we go back to the days when the Boonarong people and other Aboriginal tribes were around the bay when there were no plastics, and they were able to leave a very small footprint and they kept it in good shape. Now it's our turn. We have to look to the future. Clean up the beach so the animals don't eat it and get sick and die or they don't get caught in it.